It's no small feat to garner a fearsome reputation as a buccaneer and plunderer across the Caribbean, but you have to look the part. You've probably got a pretty clear image of what a typical pirate wore. Perhaps said pirate is wearing a large captain's hat, a long red cloak, and an eye patch. Around him, perhaps his first mates are wearing bandanas and blue and white striped shirts, brandishing knives and cutlasses. Although there are likely hints of truth here and there in these statements, your average run-of-the-mill pirate looked quite different to the Captain Hooks and Jack Sparrows of popular culture. Today, we'll be taking a look at typical pirate clothing across the golden age of piracy. What did these pirates look like, and why did they wear what they wore? How did pirate clothing help them stand out, and how did it give them a sense of individuality on the high seas? Sit back and relax as we give you a historical tour through the wardrobes of your typical pirate captain and their crew members. Welcome to Walk the Plank. Now, it's important to discern that there would almost certainly, most of the time, have been a difference in the attires of a pirate captain and your average run-of-the-mill pirate crew member. Your average pirate, especially pirates that were just starting out in their careers, were often poor or penniless, and often wore whatever they could. However, there was functionality to each of their available clothing items, and some of the classic elements of the public image of a pirate were worn in the famed Golden Age of Piracy. Starting from the head down then, it wouldn't have been uncommon to spot pirate crew members out at sea wearing the iconic banners depicted in popular media, wrapped around their head as they sailed. Many low-level pirates tended to wear bandanas as they were a great aid when working aboard the ship. Pirates that were, for example, tending to the sails, operating weaponry, boarding captive ships, or even just working on cleaning and carrying duties could use bandanas to keep the sweat out of their eyes, and of course to keep the sun off their foreheads. Caps and hats were occasionally favoured, but bandanas typically allowed a working pirate to protect his or her head from the elements, whilst not having to worry about losing a hat when in action. Many pirates are also depicted with earrings, which were indeed often worn at sea. The bigger and more expensive the earrings, the better, as should a pirate be killed in action, valuable earrings made of gold or silver could be sold by his or her family to pay for their funerals, with anything left going to their surviving loved ones. Some sources claim that pirates even used heavy hoop earrings to weigh down their earlobes, applying pressure to ease the effects of seasickness when on the turbulent waves. Some pirates were drawn in by superstition too, believing that wearing earrings could improve their eyesight, or that earrings would give them magical healing powers. For the average pirate, the attire covering their bodies weren't too dissimilar from the clothes worn by average sailors. Since many pirates were sailors who wanted to profit from the treasures of piracy, many individuals simply used their existing clothes in their new lives of crime. Simple linen shirts were typically worn by most crew-level pirates, whilst they often wore breeches on their legs, tight-fitting clothing that would not get tangled in weaponry or structures on board ships. As for the colour of the clothing, the average deckhand wore rather nondescript, drab-coloured clothing. Beiges and whites, greys and tans were commonplace, with splashes of green, blue and red here and there. Some pirate captains even encouraged their crew members to take and dress themselves in the clothes of their victims. Pirate captains, on the other hand, often opted to flaunt their wealth in extravagant appearances and valuable clothing. Piracy was a profitable game, and for those who played it well, vast riches awaited. These riches could often be spent on top-of-the-line clothing items, and the wealthy pirate captains dabbled in such luxuries. While still donning the shirt and breeches, a pirate captain might have allowed himself velvet or silk waistcoats firmly buttoned around the torso. Typically, these were deep reds or blues in colour, and would be worn specifically to make the pirate stand out amongst his crew members as a rich and powerful captain. As for headwear, a pirate captain was rarely seen without an extravagant hat of some sort. The classic pirate hat, the tricorn, was worn extensively throughout the golden age of piracy by notable captains, but it was by no means the only form of headwear worn by these dangerous individuals. Pirate captains of Europe and America in the years surrounding the golden age of piracy would often be seen wearing cavalier hats, broad-brimmed and topped with a feather, or perhaps later down the line, even top hats. There was no set outfit for a captain, it was all down to personal preference and image, and many individuals chose to wear very different things. Some pirate captains even opted to wear wigs, popular among 17th and 18th century nobles. Notoriously expensive to buy, these were typically favoured only by the wealthier captains, who often decorated them with ribbons to add to the extravagance. Another iconic piece of clothing associated with pirate captains is the long canvas coat. 
On occasions, these coats were prizes taken from wealthy captives. But with the profits many pirates made from plundering, it was not uncommon for them to simply purchase the fine clothes for themselves. Typically known as frock coats, these stylish pieces of clothing trailed down to below the pirates' knees, allowing for the pirates to both stay insulated and dry, but also to make themselves appear more elaborate in their raids and operations. Obviously, many pirates took to the seas with one goal in mind, treasure. There was plenty of it to be hunted down or forcibly taken, and the captains would revel in the plundering of a good bounty of treasure, taking large amounts of jewellery for themselves in the process. Black Bart, one of the most prolific and successful pirates ever, was famous for wearing large amounts of jewellery, specifically a huge necklace encrusted with gold and diamonds, with a large cross at the end. Typically, the captains would take double the loot for themselves than that which was passed down to pay their crew members, and many of them lived lavishly off of it. Another feature that caused the captains of pirate ships to stand out from their crew members were their weapon sashes and belts. Many pirate captains were often described to be wrapped in huge leather holsters, perfect for the transportation of flintlock pistols, knives, grenades, and cutlasses. These sashes would grant easy access to a mobile arsenal of weapons ripe for the picking, as a pirate captain boarded a ship and prepared his crew for capture. So just where do all of these classic images of pirates come from? If the reality was different to what we're led to believe in popular media, then how did these myths originate? Let's start with a famous one, the pirate eye patch. Search the word pirate on Google and you'll immediately be met with a slew of pirate caricatures and fancy dress costumes, almost all of which feature eye patches as a defining feature, presumably to cover up the character's missing eye after a bloody swashbuckling battle. Whilst it is possible that pirates used eye patches to cover up wounds, it was much more likely that they were used on a purely temporary basis to help the wearer's eyes adjust to the dark. Since many pirate operations took place under the cover of darkness, they needed to be able to move and fight effectively in places of low light. Some sources therefore claim that eye patches were worn just before such operations, allowing the pirate to prepare his or her vision before heading into battle. And what about gold teeth? Pirates in popular media are often depicted with either a full set or one shiny, sparkling gold tooth. But is there any truth in that? Unfortunately not. Strangely enough, this myth isn't that old at all. Johnny Depp, in his iconic portrayal of pirate Captain Jack Sparrow in the Pirates of the Caribbean film franchise, started this one off. He insisted that Jack Sparrow should be in possession of a gold tooth, something that would be instantly recognisable when the character was seen. It certainly worked, and on an even bigger scale than Depp perhaps first intended it to. Another classic pirate clothing myth is that of the wooden prosthetic leg. While it cannot be denied that life as a pirate on the high seas was dangerous and bloody, and that limbs or body parts would often be wounded or severed in raids or operations, there is not one concrete eyewitness report or historical record of a pirate having ever been fitted with a wooden prosthetic leg. That's not to say that it never happened, but popular media is again to blame for this one. It's thanks to stories written many, many years after the golden age of piracy ended that plenty of modern day pirates are portrayed with missing limbs. Long John Silver, the iconic pirate in Robert Louis Stevenson's novel Treasure Island, was the first pirate to be shown with a wooden leg. In fact, the hook for a hand trope has also experienced the same treatment. First portrayed on Captain Hook in the J.M. Barry novel Peter Pan and its subsequent film adaptions, there is no evidence that any real life pirates ever chose to don a sharp, curved appendage where their hands once sat. Finally, if you were to look at any pirate crew depicted in popular media, you'll likely see baggy, ill-fitting, or torn up clothing. Although it makes sense to assume that pirates looking for whatever scraps of clothes they could get their hands on would often end up wearing ill-fitting or oversized clothes, this would be a great danger when at sea. Loose clothing would be easily snagged on ropes, weapons, or ship structures, so clothing needed to be tight-fitting while still permitting the pirates enough flexibility to hoist a sail or swing a cutlass. So the average pirate, it would seem, was a far cry from the elaborate, characterised depictions we see in popular media. Piracy was, in the main part, a common man's game, and drew in individuals from all walks of life. But particularly, it was the sailors that grew entwined in this wild and dangerous trade. Usually, sailors turned to lives of crime when they grew tired of their poor wages, so opted to take the plunge, often literally, into a life of piracy. Your typical pirate crew member out on the seas in the golden age of piracy was almost indistinguishable from the sailors that were gaining an honest living on the merchant ships targeted by the pirates themselves. If any group of individuals can be classed as extravagant and characterised, however, it's the pirate captains. 
Gaudy and elaborate, these were the true winners in the game of piracy, and with their fine silks and shining jewellery, they were more than prepared to flaunt it to all the men and women of the sea. Thank you for watching this episode of Walk the Plank. I'll see you next week for another one. Cheers!